What's up, everybody? It's your boy, Marlon, a.k.a. Kakash13542, a.k.a. YG Piranha, a.k.a. Fish93, here yet with another review. I hope everybody had a great May the 4th be with you yesterday. I did plan on dropping it yesterday, but unfortunately, I had to deal with a bunch of technological issues that basically had me deal with doing it today. So, happy Revenge of the Fifth! Uh, it still works out because my primary review that I will be talking about will be Jedi Survivor. Um, and I'll also be talking about quite a few other games, um, including the anticipation of Tears of the Kingdom and Redfall that just came out. So, let's start with Redfall. So, Redfall is a free-to-play with games xbox game pass or pc game pass excuse me free to play with that subscription um bethesda first person shooter um it is a multiplayer survival pve style um where you go out and you go kill vampires and do missions um there's a story to it um this town has been town of redfall um i think it's based out of like boston area um, is being plagued by vampires, and we don't know why. You play as one of four characters. Um, my character, Jacob, has, like, tele ethereal abilities is the best way to explain it. Um, he can turn invisible. He summons a really, really cool gun, and he has a crow that he can send out and um, allow you to see enemies through walls and stuff. Um, there, are there are different types of vampires, like shrouds and other different blood types. Um... It's fun, and you can play with your friends. I think that's the best part of that you can have is that you can have up to four people, I believe, play together. Um, so I've been playing with my buddies Necron and Marticus, um, and having a good time playing with those guys. So um, I'll probably play, try and play tonight, see if they join me. But I'm having a blast. I've spent already five hours on the game while at post work this week, and it's a lot of fun. Um, if you go online and look at the reviews, the reviews aren't very high, um, but with that taken in mind that it is made by Bethesda so there's definitely room to grow I really hope that the studio is possibly working on more content for the game when you know they already dropped a whole bunch of DLC that comes with the game like cosmetic wise so it would be cool to see if they have like a rotation of like hey we dropped more missions or we get a, we did a really really big hotfix really really big update and you can just do more in the game um be able to interact more um with more of your environment because there's a lot it's, it's, it's a it's a big map with you really only killing stuff um you're not really doing much else you know and if you, you go and find guns to collect them but you know it'd be it'd, it'd be cool just to just have more to do um kind of like anthem how anthem was there's there's a really really good bones really good framework and if you just put put a little bit more put a little bit more into it pump a little more blood pun intended um into it it should be fine so, but however, if, if it's a simple game you want to play with your friends, um, it's mindless, it's mindless shooting, and the best thing about it is that when your character dies out in the field of Redfall, you don't have to, like, go get all your gear, go find your body and pick everything back up, you just die, you just get teleported back to the respawn area, you just go back out there again. So, it does, it does allow for a, a kind of, like, a fresh take on a first-person shooter that you can play with your friends, because, like, if you die, you don't have to lose progress or anything, you just have to start your mission over basically so again redfall it's available through xbox game pass pc pass if you don't have that you can you have to pay for it obviously but if you have xbox game pass or pc pass definitely give it a shot um next thing we'll be talking about will be the fact that i finished final fantasy remake um at least not the integrate not the intermission integrate part but just the main portion of the story and they did a really really good job um i understand some people don't agree with the direction that the story is going um with them canonically truly making advent children especially the complete edition you know if you haven't seen the complete edition it has flashbacks of zach it explains denzel's um backstory more it has just much better sequences of characters um displayed but with them canonically making advent children what it is to the story it would make more sense to make the sephiroth that you're dealing with the sephiroth from advent children and not the sephiroth from the original game especially because you know the universe is now more full-fledged uh full fleshed out excuse me um another thing about this game and like you really got to take that into consideration is that every 30 seconds in the original game is like three hours in this game like, I might be exaggerating a little bit with that um, ratio, but the quality of the original game in, in 
the remake can't be compared. Like, you know, in the original game, you just went around Shinra and just didn't actually go inside the Shinra building. And this one, you go inside the Shinra building. You know, the opening cutscene has more than just Cloud in the opening cutscene. Those are just very, very small, small bits and pieces of the game. You know, Sephiroth himself is is just amazing. Like, he himself is, is a god with a purpose. Um, and, and they, they show all of this in this game in a sense of like, yeah, this might be the first part of the game, but we didn't want to waste your time with you waiting for how long the game came out and with everybody, how beloved this story is to Final Fantasy uh, fans and how it is to just the universe of Final Fantasy. Um, so yeah, I, I am working on Integrate right now to see how they're going to tie in Yuffie's origin story with Wutai into Avalanche and how they're going to do all that. It is exciting to know it is exciting to know with the game coming out soon that eventually we will be finding out what playable characters will be in the second game. Um, other than just Yuffie, I'm hoping Yuffie's in the game itself and not just in like a DLC content. But I'm hoping Vincent Valentine is playable. I heard he's been recast and it's not Steve Bloom anymore. I met Steve Bloom. The guy's genius. I'm really upset that it's not him. At the same time, I'm happy that Vincent Valentine has been recast. So there's just a huge possibility of him being playable in the game, not just him showing up in the game. Um, we might get some Seer. Hopefully we get some of Kate She. Kate She would be really cool to make an appearance um, with, you know, Red 13. So... I, I'm, I'm very excited to see where they're going, and I also had to slate this game and finally finish it before Final Fantasy 16 comes out next month. So, yeah. Final Fantasy 7 Remake. Um, loved it. Great. I am working on 100%ing and, and platinuming it, but at the same time, with 16 coming out next month, we will see. Um, so, yeah. Um, I'm going to switch gears real quick and talk about a TV show that just came out. It's called The Citadel. It's on Amazon Prime, executive produced by the Russo Brothers. You know, you, if you know the name Russo Brothers, it's because of it's because of Marvel. It's because of Winter Soldier. It's because of Scarlet, it, um, Black Widow, excuse me. It's because of, I believe, Infinity War. Um, it's it's because of those movies that you know that you know the Russo Brothers as as directors. It's like the Wachowski siblings made their name known with the Matrix movies. So um, the action sequences are great. Um, it's a spy TV show, and it has so much Mr. and Mrs. Smith vibes to it because of the way that they have the characters between Richard Madden and Priyanka Chopra Jonas. Um, it's just a just a great just a great show. Um, they're on thir- the third episode now. Um, you got Stanley Tucci. Stanley Tucci is a great actor. If if you're a fan of him, I'm a fan of him. Um, so and just just him being in the show just adds just like a super familiar face because. I've seen Richard Madden from Eternals. I had to look it up because I'm like, where do I know this guy? And it's Eternals. And it's like, okay, he was the leading man in Eternals. Um, I don't remember seeing Priyanka in anything, but I looked it up and she was in um, Baywatch, the new one that came out with Zac Efron and Dwayne Rock Johnson. Um, so Priyanka Chapa Jonas. Um, but her, her action sequences are great. Her acting is, is, is phenomenal. Like, in, in the first episode, there was a range to her acting that showed very, very well. And I'm just like, ooh, I want to see you in further projects that are more known to me. I mean, there's so much, there's so many streaming services, so many visual projects out now. You just have to just pick your battles and watch them. And I am recommending this one to anybody that has Amazon Prime. Um, so you can watch, you know, Amazon Prime Video, but also anybody that is a fan of spy stuff. If you're a fan of 007, there's a there's a huge in the third episode. There's a huge scene of Richard Madden's character riding on skis down a mountain. Super 007 vibes. Like 007 made that scene happen. Like like you know what I mean. So you got 007 vibes. You got Mr. and Mrs. Smith vibes. Um, it's great, witty witty dialogue that makes you just 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 laugh wholeheartedly because it's it's very very clever and again russo brothers so action sequences are clean oh the other movie that they made the gray man netflix movie um if you've seen that movie with um chris evans and man can't think of his name from the gray man it's gonna bug me 
I'm looking it up right now. Apologies. Wow. Ryan Gosling. Thank you. So yeah, I knew Chris Evans' name because I, I I put his name as Captain America in my brain. But you got Ryan Gosling as the leading man in that one, and that one's directed by the Russo brothers, Netflix original. So yeah. Sorry to sorry to have to look that up, but again, Citadel, Amazon Prime, highly recommend. So alrighty, we're gonna go now into Jedi Survivor. Ten out of ten. It is it is the absolutely the best Star Wars game I've ever played. And that is including, obviously, The Force Unleashed 1 and 2. Um, I haven't gone through the entire story yet. Um, I'm actually not nowhere near the story. Like, I just got to really my first point in the story. I just made it to my first ally um, from the previous game. He was the pilot from the previous game. So if you know who that is, good on you. Um, but yeah, the, the combat is phenomenal. The character development is phenomenal. The, the dialogue, the graphics... Um, the relationship between him and his droid BD-1, um, phenomenal. Like it, outside of the Darth Maul boss fight in Force Unleashed One, everything about this game literally is a perfected Star Wars game. They really wanted you to feel like like you had stepped into Cal Kestis permanently, especially because the first game he was growing into his Jedi Knight status. Now that he is a Jedi Knight, you don't have to learn any of those Force techniques. You just can just you just become a better Jedi. Is all you do in this game, and it's phenomenal. It's so much fun, um, especially with like the first thing that you do is what you learn at the ending of the last game, story-wise. The one of the first things you learn is confusion. Isn't that the droid you're looking for? So being able to use Force confusion is fucking awesome. Uh, it just adds so much more to his character because it is a it's one of the only true Jedi Jedi moves that seems that that can be used negatively. Like, you know, you are deceiving somebody. You are forcing somebody to do something they're not willing to do. You don't want to buy these dead sticks. <laughs> like, so it's 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 really interesting how when he uses it, he's just like, I'm pretty sure I wasn't taught to use it like that, but deception is deception and if it's used for the right purposes it's used for the right purposes so alrighty I'm gonna add something to this one um, I ended up getting the Legend of Zelda OLED switch and I sent some pictures on one of my social some of my social medias um, however I thought I'd give a review um, and actually show a side-by-side -side comparison to anybody that is considering or does not know what the differences are like I didn't know 100% what the differences are so yeah I'll also be showing off an extra pair of joy cards so I'll show those off real quick. So these are the Skyward Sword Legend of Zelda Joy-Cons. The reason I'm showing these off is because guess what comes out next Friday? Tears of the Kingdom. So yeah, we got these bad boys. I'll try to... There you go. So you can actually see the, the Hylian Glyph and everything on both of them. So yeah, I got these. I've wanted these for a while. Finally got them. Super happy. Um, and then I might as well show you the Joy-Cons for the actual OLED. So those are the OLED joy cards. Again, they both have the Highland Signia on the front and they're gray on the back. So both versions have the gray trigger covers, which are super nice because the gray is a really, really nice accent color. Um, so yeah. So now you got both the switches. So this is the regular switch. This is the OLED switch. Um, this one does have a two-tone design to it because it's the Legend of Zelda edition. So, ha, ha, ha. The other one doesn't have a design. Um, but, yeah. It's not much bigger. Like, don't don't count my plastic case. Like, like the screen itself is not much bigger. But, if, but it is a bigger screen. Um, it is also a much nicer screen. This screen is gorgeous. Like... So that so it there is a reason why it is an OLED switch. It has a much nicer screen. Um, and then another big difference is the dock itself. So that's the regular switch dock. That's the back of it. It opens up. It actually connects. And then you got your two USBs on the side and your three connections on the inside. You got your HDMI, your power supply, and a USB on the inside. So. This thing, because of all the USB ports, is super useful because the USB port on the inside can be used to use one of those four bay chargers for if you have a whole bunch of Joy-Cons, like I do. This two bay USB 
side can be used for conversions for people that want to play n64 wired controllers because you could use that n64 double plug-in that's literally what it was designed for so um as well as you know other wired controllers so this has way more function because it has one more usb port than the other switch does now this is the oled switch dock legend of zelda edition tears of the kingdom edition it's a gorgeous looking dock like i can't not show it off this is the back of the dock best thing that comes off it doesn't hang on like the other one which you you wouldn't think would get would, would would be an issue until you're actually having the cords and it's really nice just being able to take that off plug the cords and slap it back on so it doesn't get in the way um this one has an ac adapter the hdmi but the difference between this one is that it has a lan connection if you can see that in there in the bottom and that's huge because you can directly connect it to the internet playing switch online so that replaces the usb on the inside it does have two usbs on the outside so you can still use that one but i do like the functionality of having usbs on the inside but you swap that with having a lan cord so that's fine i mean most most of the time i feel like people are going to have their switch off off of wi-fi mode anyway if they're, if they're using it on home tv mode they're going to be using it wirelessly so like i say personally i would rather just had the usb port instead of the land port but that's me so again um thank you thank you for anybody that decided to tune in and watch um please leave a comment below i apologize that some of my previous youtube settings have not allowed comments i will make sure that you can actually comment on these videos so let me know what you think um also next week we already know it's coming out tears of the fucking kingdom so the new legend of zelda the newest probably the best legend of zelda because breath of the wild was the best legend of zelda um will be coming out and i will definitely be i i will be doing my best to showcase gameplay because i am playing on the switch however if i can't showcase gameplay i will have as much gameplay within five days so i can give the most detailed review ever because i i want to talk about as much as i can about that game while it's all all super fresh so Thank you. You guys have a good night.